three, four and a half, a three, a three, a four, a three, a two or three. So it sounds like threes have it. So somewhere between uh, difficult and, or just like right in the middle. So um, that's good. I'm, I'm, frankly, I'm actually really, really pleased because there are many students who come into this class with preconceived notions about how difficult it's gonna be. And I'm really hoping that you find it fun and, uh, and I'm hoping that at the end of this, that you feel confident that you can uh, create animations and tweens and, and uh, shape tweens and motion tweens and, and, uh, and then in, improve them. Um, for those of you who are in master's programs, you're gonna have another two classes in Flash. Uh, the next one really is uh, more or less, it's, I would say it's advanced animation, uh, including action script, that would be interactive. That would be DES 360. And so it's interactive, which means now you can create Flash animations that also include interaction from the keyboard or the mouse. And, um, and that requires some interactive programming or action script in the case of, of um, files that we create starting off with action script, you learn action script. Whereas if you choose the other template type, then you are going to be uh, doing JavaScript instead. So file new and right here, this is the, the they call the, the file type ActionScript 3.0 just because ActionScript is now out version 3.0. It's very similar to how we have HTML5. Uh, it's the, HTML5 is the fifth release right here of the language HTML and ActionScript 3.0, it's the third release of ActionScript. And ActionScript is the interactive component of Flash. And it is, um, it is programming. Uh, it is scripting. It is very similar to JavaScript. In fact, ActionScript 3.0 became, it came out really with the intent and purpose to be very much in line with the standard of, of, of JavaScript that was out there. The JavaScript language abides by a standard um, and ActionScript 3.0 Started from being 1.0 was, was a custom scripting language that was just could only work with Adobe Flash. 2.0 got a little bit better and 3.0 really made it very similar. So when you're looking at the syntax and the coding of JavaScript um, or of ActionScript 3.0, you really get the feeling you're looking at JavaScript. So that was important to come in line with JavaScript. Um, so the, uh, the HTML5 along with CSS3, that does the, the rest, that does the, uh, the animation, the display, and so on. So, uh, DES360, and then the third one is DES365, and in that one you actually create a game. Um, an interactive game, but you don't need to do one from scratch. You can, you have the option of creating one from scratch or you have the option of, of uh, choosing from a long list of ones that you can program from scratch, so. This week we're going to focus on the third part of the animation uh, chapter and uh, these are the the set of uh, tutorials that I've chosen. Okay, hold on, I just saw a question by Brandon. Do you know where we can get that list? All right, what list did I talk about? What list is that, Brandon? Oh. Sure, um, I can actually give you the link uh, during break, remind me, and I'll, um, I'll show you the website. 
where there's several, I think hundreds of games that they, each of them, they dissect each one and they tell you step by step how to code that game in ActionScript. But again, that's DES 365, so you're getting way ahead of things. DES 360 is between here and there. So this week, as far as understanding the workspace goes, we're going to learn how to create create um, the cloud the Creative Cloud sync settings. So that's actually you take uh, Flash and you synchronize it with the cloud. Create animation. We're going to add the cooler themes, animated masks, animations with motion editor, and then as far as importing assets, you're going to learn how to embed fonts. Now, one thing while I'm on that, embedding fonts, uh, fonts come standard on computers. Those are called system fonts. And if your animation uses a custom font or a font that's not part of the standard fonts that are on a computer, what you need to do is you have to embed them right inside your own animation. And it's kind of like a, um, a, a container. It acts as a container. In fact, I think it was Brandon who, um, there was a, a discussion post that I really, really thought was great. Um, I mean, the reference that was used, the quote. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can find it really here, quickly here. Suitcase was one of the analogies used of Flash that was like a suitcase, um, and it had two other adjectives that described the um, what Adobe Flash was like and symbolic of. I don't see it jumping out at me here. But um, Adobe Flash is like a suitcase. In It's like a container. And uh, it was one of the analogies. And so embedding fonts is kind of like putting fonts in the container of the animation. and. And then it goes with the animation. It's basically embedded in it. And so the person doesn't have to download a separate font. It comes with when they, when they run the um, uh, animation, it's provided right there. And that's one of the tasks of this week's assignment. Publish Flash content on multiple platforms is the final one for the objectives of this week. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, Kim's question about uh, if you've used fonts from defont.com, you have to embed those, right? And that is correct. They, they have to be downloaded and embedded. This week, we're going to focus on the last third of the chapter on animation, and then we'll be using the same uh, set of tutorials, but we'll be looking at the ones that have not we haven't yet looked at. My goal is to get through all of these. There's some of these that we won't get through this mod uh, this week, but next week uh, I'll um, point them out. So if you, I hope you realize that the thing that you're working on each week, your assignment is going to become your final project. And your final project, the goal is to create something that you could include in your uh, online web portfolio. And I think I mentioned to you earlier that next week I'd like to show you how to upload a custom animated uh, flash animation to website, for example, uh, wix.com. I can also show you how to embed it in a custom website too. Um, both of those I think are important tasks because once you create it, you want to be able to publish it and not only just publish the file but then put it on a website somewhere so that somebody can uh, view it and put it in your portfolio so it can be viewed. So let's talk about the uh, discussion this week. We're going to change gears just a little bit and go away, go away from the concept of being a creative director and instead uh, look at the technology that's being developed at Adobe to follow 
the uh, Adobe uh, Flash to be like the successor to Adobe Flash. And I've, I've already shown you this graph. It's pretty important to be aware of it when I go to the website that and then click on trends, indeed.com, and click on, tre click on trends. If you look at this, you'll see that Adobe Flash peaked and then is starting to come down. Now, Adobe Edge is the product that Adobe created to try to take, try to keep the developers, the Adobe Flash developers happy. But as you can see, it's the green line here. It just hasn't really picked up. They start working on it, and uh, it, Adobe Flash has not picked up where Adobe, uh, excuse me, Adobe Edge, that's what this discussion question is about, has not picked up where Adobe Flash was losing. HTML5, on the other hand, the output format that's not reliant upon the Adobe Flash runtime has just, just really taken off. And as you can see, it's the top job trend. Right here, the HTML5 is the most sought after skill in, in the entire industry. Not just software industry, but all industry. This is the search for, most search for tag. Now, if you notice here, back in January 13, uh, about February, March 2013, it also peaked and then started coming down. Now, I was really worried about this trend right here because I was already concerned about the fact that the Adobe Flash was getting less and less popular. But this trend here really concerned me. I want to show you JavaScript is it too had hit a peak right around January 2012. See that? And JavaScript goes along with HTML5, and then I can probably all also add CSS3. If you've had DES241 or, or APP242, you'll know what these other terms are, CSS3, HTML5. You won't know JavaScript because we don't go over JavaScript. So I was noticing this trend coming down, and this is, in, this is significant. I thought to myself, what is going on that makes JavaScript and even HTML5 to come down here, what's causing that? And I started thinking, I started having certain theories about that trend and why it was happening. And I'm just curious, I don't know really the cause of this downturn in skills that took, began taking place. And just for a minute, I, uh, it's somewhat pertinent to the conversation, the question here about uh, Adobe Flash, because the question here, after we, we introduce Adobe, announcing Adobe Edge at their conference, and kind of getting up the hype here, but you can see right here that built for web designers who code and web designers, developers who value design, Adobe Edge is now Adobe's key brand for tools and services that can create beautiful, mobile-ready content and apps with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for delivery to modern browsers and mobile devices. See, this is the big catch right there because Stephen Jobs, back in this initial downturn here in Adobe Flash, really was caused by, hold on one sec while I get my browser to move. Ooh. There you go. This downturn, okay, Adobe Flash is a blue. This downturn right in there, let me take off JavaScript for just a second so you can, we can get back to it. This downturn in the skill of Adobe Flash was, I believe, directly caused by the comments Right there, this right there, and then even the follow-on. I believe that downturn, what this is measuring, by the way, if you don't know, this website's for job, job descriptions and, or job postings, and 
And this trend, this chart right here, measures how many times job descriptions, how many job descriptions are using that term within their job description, and they, they're, they give you the trend of that. So does everybody understand this chart? Does it, is there somebody who doesn't understand this chart? Anyways, uh, right here, this is about when Steve Jobs made his comments that Adobe Flash is, he said, old technology. It's aged. It's dated. It's um, like a beast upon mobile devices. It's not, not needed anymore. And he really was in favor of the HTML5 standard coming out. He said, HTML5 is an open standard. Everybody, every browser can read HTML5, whereas Adobe Flash is not open per se. It actually belongs to Adobe. And so he complained about that, that it wasn't open. He complained about that it was not really a viable technology to deliver applications to mobile devices. And that was really what came out here. And in response to that, um, you know, Adobe said, you know what, Steve Jobs is really not telling the full story. The fact is, um, Adobe Flash, Flash runtime works fine on mobile devices. And the, what really is going on here is, and this is important to understand, Steve Jobs wanted to control the delivery of applications through the, um, their, through the Apple website. He'd already, uh, through iTunes, he'd already grabbed a hold of the delivery and being a distributor of, of, of uh, songs and music. And now he wanted apps as part of the delivery model of, of iTunes. And so he had really ulterior motives. When he downplayed Adobe Flash, he was he doesn't didn't want somebody else profiting from his devices by putting their compiled software on his devices he wanted to control the delivery of that application so anyway um his words really impacted the industry and adobe this downturn right here is and the upturn up turn of HTML5 is really the context of Adobe creating Adobe Edge. Does everybody understand it now? Do you have the, do you have the background of what's going on here? Okay. So putting Adobe Edge in here, we really have to remove um, remove these other other ones that are so prevalent because relative to them, Adobe Edge is like nothing. So I'm putting quotes around the two words. And I'm going to click that. So there's Adobe Flash getting so popular and then just dropping off. And you want, you see that? You can't even see Adobe Edge. It's because it hasn't picked up. In these years since the announcement, it, see that right there? There's the uh, 2012, September 24th, 2012. If you look at the chart here, it's happening right about here. So Adobe Edge and Adobe saying, uh-oh, man, we've got to do something. We want to hold on to our foothold of being a platform for the web, but we've gotten shot out of the sky by the comments made by Steve Jobs for mobile devices. So everybody was thinking, oh, there's no way that mobile devices can handle doing Flash with that runtime. It's just an added layer that the, the processor on the smartphone just couldn't handle. At least that was what people were led to believe. So the model that Steve Jobs is recommending is take out that flash runtime. Don't have that as an app. It literally would be an app. And then you would write 
flash animations that ran within the app flash runtime on the device. He wanted to take all that out and just let the browsers that are on the smartphones process HTML5 and CSS3 and, uh, and the JavaScript. And, and he wanted to remove out of the picture the, the dependency that the web had upon the flash runtime. He, he just had that as his goal. And, and as you can see, definitely there's the effect. Well, right around in here is when Adobe Edge came out and finished their first release of Adobe Edge, right there, approximately uh, September 2012, right there. Well, Adobe Flash has continued its landslide but Adobe Edge, as you can see, hasn't picked up. It's hard, you can't hardly even see it. I'll have to even remove relative to Adobe Flash. It's just nothing. There's nothing there. Okay, so this, you can see how few jobs are searching for Adobe Edge skills. And, that, and it's even come, come down. So the, the bottom line is I think Adobe Edge is just not gonna take off. It's not showing signs of taking off. It's been out since here, September, and it kind of went here, but look how small that is. Anyway, now you got some background for this whole discussion. <coughs> Excuse me. It says here, using ProQuest, Pro ProQuest, see below, locate the article referenced above this article, this right here, you take this, and if you log into ProQuest, I think it'll come right up. By the way, you got the uh, login there, right? Shark is the username, and then just copy and paste that as the login. Let's see if it comes right up. There it is. So if you log in, and then you bring up that link, it'll go right to it. Does everybody know how I just did that? Okay, good. All right, so uh, there's that article. And so the discussion is read through that and now take a position either for, well, that's not for, for, I'll have to remove one of those, for or against the following statement. Adobe Edge represents a change in direction for Adobe in developing rich internet applications, or RIAs. All that is is just a fancy word and term for being like multimedia, animated, interactive applications for the web. That's what that means. If you click on that, it goes to Wikipedia page that explains, oh, no it doesn't, to an Adobe uh, website which explains what rich internet applications are, RIAs. Well, like I said, audio, video, audio, uh, interactive, um, graphical, animated applications that actually have some programming to it too. So Adobe Edge represents the change of direction for Adobe in developing rich internet applications. Cite at least one reference in addition to the one cited above from ProQuest in support of your position. So a hint would be for you to take these terms, Adobe Edge and Adobe Flash, you don't need to do the quotes. Copy that, Command C, and then uh, come up here, and then click on search right here, basic search, and then paste it right in there, and then click search. And, and here are a list of, of other related articles that will help you in either taking a position for or against. Now, now understand that this is saying it represents a change in direction. And it doesn't, it's not necessarily asking the question, has, has Adobe Edge been successful in changing the direction? I don't want you to think that that's the question being answered or asked, because uh, based on what I've been showing you, you know, you can kind of see 
that the results are a little dismal. But that's not necessarily the question being asked. Here it just says Adobe Edge represents a change in direction for Adobe in developing rich internet applications. So take a position either for or against that, and then use your research here in, um, in ProQuest. Now this has to be Pro ProQuest. Okay, is everybody, everybody hear me loud and clear? Some people, some students will ask me, does it have to be ProQuest? And the answer is yes, it has to be ProQuest. The reason is, is because we already have experience searching on the internet using Google and Bing and so on, but we don't have so much experience searching a scholarly repository like ProQuest. So hence the, the value of this exercise. Okay, everybody's clear? Justin always uses ProQuest. Kat says, uh, sounds like Steve Jobs really heard Adobe Flash. Kat says, can be a pain. Joshua does not like ProQuest, nor does Brandon. Christopher says Adobe Flash dropped in a flash. That's, that's very uh, punny. All right, I wanna show you something that I really like about ProQuest, and that is you can filter on the type of things that you're searching for. And if it has full text, awesome. And so you can, you can um, also, another thing I really like, this is something you can't do easily with Google search, and that is take this and move this dial up and say, okay, I actually only want articles in this quartile, which is 2010 to 2019, and then we click update, and it will filter out all the older articles, which is really nice. You can even go further. See, now it broke that down, that five-year period, now into five years, and I can say, well, actually, I'd like to see what's been said only in the last two years. Click update, and now all these articles are, you can see, uh, published between 2014 and 2015. So that's kind of nice to be able to get the latest, be able to filter quickly on the, um, yeah, it does say 2010, 2019. I guess there's probably a typo in one of these that makes it think that it was created in 2019. But here's another thing I wanted to show you. Once you have found the article, and it needs to be an additional article into the, in addition to the one that uh, is cited in the discussion, I want you to see something. And um, let's go ahead. Frankly, the abstract is usually good enough to be enough content for you to even quote. So here is the abstract. And um, typically, I don't need to do much research in the full text unless I'm really interested in it. Typically, the abstract has the point that I use in my discussion post. Again, the abstract itself, which is like a summary, See this, citation, abstract? Oh, that's one thing, it's, it's nice to have the abstract, you can usually get the quote right out of here. Now, there's one more thing I really, really like, and that is this link right here. Watch this. Once you are looking at the article that you want to cite, watch this. Click cite, and guess what this is right there. Can anyone guess what that is? What did it give me? That's right. This is a perfect, perfectly formatted citation. And I mean perfectly formatted, because you can see the citation style, we use the APA 6 our stuff. We don't use any of these other format types. This is the one we use, APA 6. 
That's the association whose standard we use for the formatting of a reference. And there it is right there. You will get full credit for your citation if you copy and paste it as is. If you don't do that and you choose to do something like this, where you just like take the link to it, the article, and put that in the bottom of your discussion post, guess what? You're going to lose points. And the reason is a simple URL is not the APA format or APA format. This is. Okay? Everybody good? Awesome. All right, so you, you feel good about the discussion? So let's talk just for a second. Let's just spend a couple, two more minutes. And um, does anybody, uh, I'm just really kind of interested in any observations or comments. And if you'd like uh, to, uh, turn on your microphone, that's even fine with me. Anybody want to say anything about Adobe Flash or Adobe Edge, their observations? Um, Steve Jobs, uh, anything about this? I'm really, really sad that Adobe Edge, they put a lot of work into it. And they tried to market it, but it just has not taken off. Sad to say. Again, I know that that's not what the discussion is about, but, but when you search for the number of jobs that have the words Adobe Edge in it around the world slash United States, look at that. It's, it's crazy small. Let's just, let's try flash. That's even small, relatively. Now watch this, HTML5, 17,000. Look at that jump. That's why it's really good to get on the bandwagon of HTML5. And now let's look at CSS3. That was the other thing we learned about in DES 241 and APP 242, 8,649. How about the two together? 18,304. Now, I want you to keep your eyes on this range here. 60,000 to 150,000 income. I want to compare that with Let's say graphic design. Let's just compare really quickly. It's 60 to 150. Now let's look at this. 30 to 110. Now, as you can see, the range of jobs for graphic design are literally 30,000 less than the corresponding range of the web designer. Okay, now I know lots of you are not very excited about HTML5 and CSS3 and coding and websites and so on. But keep in mind that with a little bit of work, you can literally double your income becoming a web designer. Yes, that is called a pitch. What do they call it when you do a, when you give a little pitch for something that's self, oh, what's that phrase? Yeah, sales pitch, but uh, there's something else. It's kind of like, let's say I was selling, I was giving a presentation and I wrote a book and I, and I, and I give a little little spill on the book and there's a, there's a phrase I can't, can't come up with. Anyways, yes, I am interested in you guys making a lot of money. Yes, I'm interested in you seeing the numbers here. So now let's watch those numbers jump. I'm going to now look for JavaScript now. We don't yet focus on JavaScript in the graphic design, web, web design um, classes, but if you're in the IT department, you will get some JavaScript. But look at this, 50 to 140. Just know five, CSS three and JavaScript, all of those. 
50 to 140. Now, it takes all three of these in order to replace the functionality in an SWF file. Let me say that again. It takes one, an HTML file, a CSS file, and a JavaScript file, one or more, actually, one or more, one or more, one or more, in combination to do what is built into the SWF file. So it's kind of taking a lot of technology, if you will, to, um, to do what could be done with just the SWF. And so you might think, well, wow, man, it's getting more complex for breaking apart the SWF. It used to be all that functionality and animation could be done right in the SWF file. And that's true. And it was a very small SWF files we saw last week. You know, we were looking at the MOV file, the video, the corresponding video, which is frame by frame, pixel by pixel. And that's why the, the MOV file was like 35 megabytes, 35 million pixels, whereas the corresponding, uh, the same animation with Adobe Flash, that SWF file was something like, what, 42,000, a ratio of one to six, 1,679. So it's crazy, crazy how valuable that technology is but tech technically the this even though it's broken out in three different files it it too is um advanced okay so let's move on so everybody's clear on the discussion i think we're good christopher said to me it's a simple version of adobe after effects uh with one or two tools it doesn't have is that you're describing Adobe Flash with that, Christopher? Is that your description of Adobe Flash? Yeah, okay. So for this, for the assignment this week, what I want you to do is watch these tutorials. And here are the, uh, let me see if I can um, view this a little bit better. Uh, I never understand why they put it in this mode. I always jump to the student view mode in order to see it better. There isn't an assessment here, but that's not because there's not gonna be one, it's just because um, I, I am creating it just like I did the other one. This one here, I posted it late in the week also, and you have till the end of this week to um, complete that without a late penalty, week two. Okay, the phrase is coming to me, a shameful plug, isn't that it? A shameful plug if you are, if you're like, You've got the stage given to you, and I, which, I, which I have here. Uh, being a teacher, I kind of have the stage given to me. And, and as you saw a moment ago, I was kind of giving a shameful plug, but it really wasn't self-aggrandizing. I wasn't gonna personally benefit from it, but I, I figured you would. So it's not, not totally a shame, shameless plug. I think that's a shameless plug, yeah. Uh, because it's actually for your benefit that I'm, I'm really hinting and encouraging and persuading uh, each of you to think seriously about making the career move to uh, web design. Okay, enough said. I don't want any of you to be complaining. I feel like you can complain to our associate dean on her last day saying, hey, this guy is just like trying to talk us all into being web developers. Well, it's because I know you like earning good money and so that's why I say. Okay, so here are the um, tutorials to watch and then here are the steps. So take what you worked on last week and uh, the first week you learned how to make it, the second week you started making it, and what I want you to do is enhance your animation further. And here are the improvements I'd like you to make this week. 
One improvement is to use two or more audio files as part of your animation. Okay, some of you have already done that, so you've got that requirement done. Another requirement, I'd like for you to embed a font to be used by your new text event. You'll learn about that right here. To buy your new text animations. And then also, I want you to extend your animation now by having an introduction. So an introduction would be a three second introduction. So that would be in addition to your existing animation that exists from last week, uh, to introduce a three second splash screen. And what that means is you're gonna to have to push over, this is really important, I, I should probably say it three times. You're going to move everything that's currently sitting in, in frames one through 72, and move all that over to frames 73 to 144. You literally move that animation all up in order to make room for the three second splash screen, which is now gonna take over frames one to 72. How many of you understood what I was just saying? <coughs> All you have to do is you actually select it and grab it and move it and drop it in frame 73. Yeah, it's real simple. You just literally with the select tool, you can select it in your timeline, grab it and move it. You know, once it's selected, you can even use the right arrow if you want, but once it's selected, you can just move it. And that advances it and you drop it and then you introduce the, um, the splash screen for the first three seconds. But then I also want you to add a splash screen afterwards to be uh, for the follow-up. It's kind of like the, um, oh, the scrolling, the credits, and so on. So it's going to become like a little movie. Three second introduction where you're looking at a little splash screen of the text of your, an animated text of the title of your movie. Then it goes into your movie, your animation, for three seconds and then it's done and then it shifts into like the scrolling credits or you can do a mask if you want you can use a mask uh, um, you can use the the animated mask if you want you can do that for both the introduction and the scrolling credits just do some some animation It's all gonna be one scene, so it'll all be done in scene one. So just the time from, from uh, for the first three seconds, you'll see a splash screen. Next three seconds, you see the animation. Next three seconds, you see the ending. So the credits come at the end. Display credits. Yep. Yep. Okay, there's one question. Uh, can you do part of it in faster time than the rest? Well, a timeline, every scope, so let me give you a little analogy to answer your question, Melissa. Um, how many of you have seen the movie, um, I'm, we're going to take a break here in just a second, so I'm going to, uh, pause, see what it look like here, okay. So how many of you have seen the movie, um, in, what is it called, in, it just was out. In, uh, let's see, it was about, I don't even know the name of the actor, but it was in the future, and he, the, the earth was, uh, it started with I-N, I can't remember the rest of the name, the earth was in a drought and everything, and, and they went, not Inception, and they, had, they got on a spaceship, and they went out, and they 
were going out to various planets to find out how whether or not they could find a planet that was livable because this planet was interstellar that's it interstellar so um it was a great movie but the reason why i talk about that is to give you the concept and not everybody's seen how many of you seen it interstellar part of part of what uh takes place is because of the the speed of that spaceship they're going to the speed of light and time slows down and so in that spaceship they don't age so much you, you all know about the theory of relative relativity so they're going the speed of light and they don't age as quickly because time comes down to the to a halt the faster you get closer to the speed of light time actually slows down so uh, at least with the theory of relativity that is so they go on this trip and they come back and he comes back and gets back with the earth people but the earth people have maintain their speed of time and they've moved forward and he ends up coming back and he's even he's much more young much younger than his own daughter uh, he <clears throat> he looks like he's about 32 and she's like about 75 and it's because she aged more quickly because she didn't she he didn't age because he went in the speed of, speed of um, light anyways all that I explain to um, to help you understand the concept of animations in Flash. If you animate a symbol <clears throat> and you double click on that symbol and you go into it, kind of like the sad potato man, you kind of go into the spaceship. And in that spaceship, it has its own time dimension, the frames per second, its own speed of time that's taking place, at least the, the number of frames per time. It's actually measured in frames per time. The, the number of seconds is the same, but the frames per second actually is what can change. So we're in the world of the sad tail man, and we can slow him down into slow motion. In other words, like four frames per second. Now, then we come out of his world, and we come back into scene one, and there we can have a fast animation that we bring in sad tail, tail man, who's in a slow animation number of frames per second and while we are clipping along at 24 frames per second sad potato man is actually only going through four frames for example per second so he lives more or less in a different dimension they both are adhering to the same number as uh, the same length of a second but in his world he's going fewer frames per second than in in the world that we brought him into uh a, which is like 24 frames per second. So you ask the question of whether or not you could have uh, some animation during, um, let's see, can, we, can you do part of it in, in faster time than the rest? Is that possible? Melissa, does that answer your question? The time is the same, but the number of frames per unit of time is what would change within the animated objects does that that doesn't answer okay turn on your microphone please okay okay go for it i'm sorry go for it ask me um i tried to answer your question but it didn't i didn't answer it. so ask me try to come to an understanding I know I know you tried to under, you tried to answer my question, but I it it didn't make any sense to me. I didn't understand. I did I didn't hear a yes or no, so <laughs> I still don't understand. Um, for the for what I did last week, when you were looking at it, you said it actually looks better and a little bit slower speed. But then if I did my beginning and ending that we're doing this week in that same speed, maybe that wouldn't part wouldn't look as well in that slower speed, you know, less frames per second. Okay. So can here's, you do part of it? Here's what, here's what I explained that, here's why I think it wasn't clear to you. Your objects all were animated within the realm of your, um, 
the animations that took place all took place in scene one. All of, all of your animations, the movement of the shark, the movement of the boat, and so on. All of those animations yes. took place, they were tweens in scene one, correct? Yes. Okay, so that's the difference. If you had, um, if you had double clicked on some of those objects, like the boat, uh -huh. if, you, if you double click on it, you actually are going into the realm of that symbol. And in that realm, it has its own timeline, but you did not do that. All of your, you didn't double click on any of your symbols and animate them within their own animation. So that's why it's not clear to you. You, you only animated them at the scene one level. Again, you okay. could double click them. In other words, um, you could have double clicked on your boat and had your boat just rock, just do that motion. That's it. And, and it could do it within, let's say, two tenths of a second. It, your boat would do this and like that, just one thing. Then you take that animation, and all it does is back and forth. That's it. You take that animation and you drag it into your scene one, and then you span that across 72 frames. It will do this. And the reason it'll do that is because it's doing its own little animation within itself, but it, it revives itself because it's living longer and it just does its own little animation like that. Now, does that help you at all? Again, you didn't do it like, you didn't do it like the potato man. Remember with the potato man? You had to double click on the potato man. You remember his legs did this? Yes. Okay. Yes. What that means, see, you could have, you could have had the, the potato man just do slow motion movements. And then when you brought that potato man into scene one, then he would, he would do a screen, but he would do a, a slow tween. So with week one, you did have potato man doing his own little tween. So to answer your question, he could have done his, his legs very slowly. The number of frames per second could have been like 4.0. But then you drag, wow. you can drag that into this scene one, and scene one is 24 frames per second. But this, the 24 frames per second has nothing to do with the frames of the sad potato man. The only thing that it's gonna do is do its, it, it's going to take the animations and so when, if we tweak it to 24, let's say, if we had our scene one at 24 frames per second, and we drag in this animation that's only four frames per second, that's in his world, he's, he does four of his frames per second. And in, he's living in a world that's doing 24. Now, this world will do 24 frames, but in a second, this guy, is not affected by the 24, he's living in a world that's going 24 frames per second. And this, and he, excuse me, his world is like a slow motion world because in a second, he's just gonna crank through four frames. The, the four frames that he cranks through belongs to him. That's on his timeline. It has nothing to do with the world that he's been dropped into. The scene one world has its own frames and its own timeline and its own speed but he's going to live do four of his frames per second in his timeline but he's going to be brought into a world that's going 24 frames per second but again this 24 frames per second is not affecting the unit of frame here is 1 24th of a second where the unit of a frame here is 1 4th of a second okay so, i understand you now <laughs> all right it took me a Thank while. <laughs> it took no, you did good. It took me a while. Well, no, I, yeah, it took me a while because I, I couldn't. Um, I, I'd forgotten that you had done. I think you froze up.
my Zoom crashed. And I'm concerned that it, it uh, ended up losing the recording. Anyways, let's take a break. Let's take a 10 minute break. And, um, and I'm afraid that the first hour of our recorded lecture, oh, it just occurs to me, somebody else is recording. That'd be great. Um, I'm now uh, hoping that did, uh, whoever's doing a recording, if you could help me, mine just crashed and it stopped doing the recording. So keep doing the recording and if you could, um, you can help me by uh, uploading that file where I can get it and I'll, I'll upload it to everybody else. I, I'm quite sure that mine didn't, uh, mine lost its memory of the past hour. All right, let's take a 10 minute break. And uh, yeah, that's a good, I, good thought, man, a backup. Having students running the recording is a good backup in case Zoom crashes. Yeah, go ahead, Josh. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my quick question um, is in for the animation for last week, I had a um, some text kind of rolling, but it came in too fast. Um, is there a way that you can show us how? What happened? I can't hear you anymore. You were talking about it a little bit ago, but um, when it comes to Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Oh, yes, speaking. Yeah, I can hear you. Joshua, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. Um, let's now look at the game list. Um, Are you asking about this one, Kat, right here? This opens up a, a Linux prompt to your hard drive, and these are Linux commands. The file system. So you can see there's the... Um, downloads folder and documents. So when you go into terminal, the reason why I do it as a programmer, I, I jump into that occasionally. And then you can, um, it's case sensitive down here. This is Linux actually. Did you know that the Mac operating system, OS X is, is a version of Linux actually? No, Cat, you don't need that up. It doesn't help. It's only for programmers, pretty much. Okay, Kim, the uh, 
the length of the animations are three seconds for the introduction, three seconds for the inter animation from last week, plus three seconds for a conclusion. So three plus three plus three. Three plus three plus three. There we go. Nine. Nine seconds. Does that answer your question? Brandon. Brandon's being wise again. Okay. Yeah. Three seconds, three seconds, three seconds. If you if you look here, it'll say it. Okay. Yep. Okay, so uh, I was looking for for Brandon, I was going to show him. While, while I'm looking, I want to show you guys, uh, I'm going to give you this link, and uh, while I'm, while I'm uh, looking for this file, go ahead and click on this link and watch it. And, and this is probably one of the most popular, I'll turn off the, um, this is probably one of the most popular flash animations ever. And it's titled Sita Sings the Blues. And this is actually just the trailer. But if you notice, look right here. Can you see how long this animation is? This is a flash animation. It's one hour, 21 minutes, and 32 seconds. Now keep in mind that we are focused on a nine second animation here. This is one hour, 21 minutes and 32 seconds. This is all done with a, all done in flash. So go ahead and check that out. It's pretty cool. Um, by the way, this kind of reminds me of what you're doing. You're, you're, you're basically like creating a trailer for your own video game. See, see this right there? See that animated text? And look at the font that it used. See, you could do something very similar. But this, look at, this is already using nine seconds. Let me do that again. Remember how the first three seconds, it's just three seconds. But here, Parasite Pictures presents Fade In, Fade Out, the greatest breakup story ever told. Fade In and Fade Out. And then a little, anyways, you don't have to do it to this extent, but as you can see, um, that's kind of what you're doing. You're creating a little bit of a trailer. Let's jump to the end. Let's see what it does at the end. And then you'll have a three second ending. No, yours won't be this long. See the sings the blues. You could have your own title. It's all. Anyways, that's pretty cool.
Okay. And um, I'm trying to get to the uh, the file, the website with all the games. I think this is it right here. No, that's the cheat sheets I have. See, uh, since we've been in Canvas, I haven't taught this class. Give me one second while I look. No, Kim. Those were examples, uh, Kim asked the question, isn't there a link to it in the last week discussion post? Those are actually examples of games that you could play. The link that I'm looking for is the link of ones that you can create from, and they give you the instructions in ActionScript. I'm still looking, give me a second. Still looking, hold on. I'm looking at, um, let's see. Anyways, I might have to do that after class because I, we've uh, gone through our 10 minutes on the break and I, I can't remember the, the website of, of where we used to be I don't remember our, our website that we, was a learning studio, was that it? Yeah, I think I may have it here, hold on. I might have it here after all. Never want to disappoint Brandon. Do not, do not, I repeat, do not disappoint Brandon. Okay, one second. Um, Is everybody back from the break? Probably so. All right, here is the link. I'll post it right here. 
That's the link. Now, again, this is for Brandon. Brandon's an overachiever. That's a compliment. He wants to get ahead of the game. And don't worry about that. It's not for three classes to come. So here's where you can, uh, in three classes from now, you can then download this uh, and do the step-by-step. -step. And it, it literally tells you how to create this game step by step with pictures and everything. And now that's just one of, as you can see, 212 flash games. So in that class, in two classes from now, you're gonna be able to pick one, you, you can either start from scratch or you can just, look at that, here's Pong. Speak of the devil. You learned how to literally create this game that has interactivity. That would be, again, DES 365. And here are the steps to create the Pong game. Right there. That's it. It's done. Right there. Pretty straightforward. And that's your final project for the, the class, DES 365. Now, this is different than if you were to create just an animation because this one, you have control over the paddles. Like it might be a up down arrow or on the right or a D e and D key on the left. So that's the difference between what you learn in this class, which is an animation that you just watch, versus a video game. Okay, everybody clear? See, I don't know that this is. I'm not able to do this. I mean, I there might be some commands that I'm missing here. I try to use just my mouse, but and look at this. It even gives you the source code, so you don't have to type it in yourself. The whole flash file is there. Well, this is it. See, I don't know. Um, that's the flash file, but uh, anyways. So let's let's not go into that anymore. And you're, uh, Brandon. I think you're good, right? Yeah, I think I think the action script. I didn't see the action script. Oh, thanks for following along. Read the next tutorial to add code to the game and make things work. Okay, so that's the basics of the drawing. And so then you have to go here to the next tutorial. Uh, part two programming the ball. So there we go. This is the action script right here. So don't freak out, everybody. You don't need to just type it from scratch. It's all, it's all right here. You can type what's here. You can even copy and paste it into your, uh, and then player three, the part three of the player paddle. So there's more programming. And then it says download, let's see. Maybe it says click here to read part four and get the CPU panel moving. So they broke this out into four different. Get the source call while supplies last, that's funny. Okay, let's move back to our regular lecture, get off uh, that tangent, because that's for, um, that's for a different class. Yeah, that's action scripts right there. That's what you learn in uh, the next class. You get an introduction to the action script. In this class, we just learn animation. In the next class, we learn to do introduction to the ac action script that we were just looking at. That's DES 360. And then the third class takes that and creates games out of it. So, um, 
All right. Uh, now, um, let's now focus on the assignment. And uh, who would like, uh, Stephanie asked the question, do I teach the class? And yes, I do. Also, uh, Loki teaches it. Oh, Christopher, yes, you can do kin kinetic typography. Sorry. Animated text. In fact, that's what I kind of am hoping, that type of thing is hoping what I, uh, what people, just the simple animations of text. Oh yes, Jeff, so go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I had a call and running off my phone right now. Um, real quickly, uh, so when you bring in the text, um, how is that slowed down? I mean, I know you were talking about earlier, but when it comes to text, is that the same way? Yeah. Um, Okay, because I noticed with mine, um, I actually showed my whole scene down to like 22 frames per second just to see what it would do, and it still kept it still kept coming in too fast. Yeah, let's. Uh, I think what I'd like to do is uh, kind of go over the assignment and be given that you already are kind of uh, you kind of are already a step ahead because you're using text already. Uh, what I'd like you to do is we can even uh, spend some time. You sharing your screen, and we can uh, everybody can learn from us fixing your yours. So, um, okay. Okay. Uh, is that that's your question, Joshua? Yeah, that works for me. Okay. All right. So um, now, uh, yes, Kimberly, you can do uh, make letters appear one at a time. The way to do that. There's, there's a couple, couple ways. One, you can animate each letter so that it pops up. Another way you can use is a mask. So an animated mask. And um, an animated mask, if you want, go ahead and click on that and you can watch that. What it does is you can have, like on one layer, you can have your words, and on the other layer, you can have an, a shape tween that, um, goes over the top of it and then as an animated mask you can have it so that when it runs it slowly can reveal the shape tweak can go from not being over any of the letters to being over all the letters and then um, so you basically reveals one at a time yeah it's like in Photoshop when you do that quick, quick mask Okay, so let's now, let's now talk about this assignment. Um, two or more audio files. All right, so what I'd like to do is take one of your, um, what I'd like to do is have one of you, um, let's see, Liz, you wanted to, to, uh, to do this. What I'd like to do is take your flash file and, um, I want you to, let's, can you share your screen, Liz? I'd like you to bring up your flash file and then you, let's talk about how you want to animate, how you want to add um, audio to it. By the way, did you, last week, we had one, not necessarily Melissa, it can, uh, at, Melissa asked the question, must it be MP3, and now you can have other formats. Last week, in the readings and tools overview, there was a video, importing audio and video into Flash Professional. Liz, have you had a chance to watch this yet? I haven't required anybody to do video, but um, 
Um, I just haven't thought to in involve video, but um, does anybody have any interest in, in involving video in this assignment? I just didn't think that it really lent itself to using video. Yeah, video or audio. Oh, Melissa, I just saw your uh I just saw your uh comment about the wave file. That it didn't fade in and out. I couldn't recall that we made that observation. Okay, I think Liz, maybe let's, uh, I'm not sure if Liz heard me. Um, let's do this. Let's work on Kim. Um, oh, okay. All right. So Liz, did you want to share your screen and we would uh, work on yours, adding an audio? We could do that. I was also thinking of uh, seeing if Kim. You don't need to do a video, Kim. Okay. Hey, Kim, let's do that. Kim, you said you have your audio already. Oh, okay. Did, and you said you had a song. In fact, one thing we can do, um, Melissa, you already have included audio in your, you had the JAWS. Okay, Melissa, let's work on your sum and you can, uh, everybody can get familiar with the audio. Can you share your screen, Melissa? Okay. I'm why well, there we go. Stop share. Okay, go ahead. Can you turn on your microphone? Yeah, maybe I can turn it on for you. What did you end up doing with that uh, first? I'm going to unmute you. 
What did you end up doing with that? What did you end up doing with that? With the first seconds that, uh, did you end up editing the, uh, oh, I totally forgot we were supposed to meet on Saturday for a presentation on, uh, we were going to work on the garage software. And I spaced that. And I can't remember, is it, oh, I can't remember his name, who was going to work with us. Okay. Um, I'm going to contact him because GarageBand is what he wanted to go over. Totally space that. Okay, so go ahead and um, let's step through your animation. And you put, you just created a layer and you inserted, can, can you hear me, Melissa? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, sure, sure can. So you just insert a new layer and then you um, put the audio on that layer. And it looks like you've got several audio The the first one is the what I wanted at the beginning where you just hear the ocean and the seagulls sounds in the background. And then I wanted um, when the shark fin come up to, to start playing the Jaws music and fade out the ocean music, the ocean sounds, I'm sorry, but, um, but I couldn't get it to fade. And remember we, oh, yeah. um, I thought maybe it had something file. to do with it, about wave file. Okay. I just left it alone because you said last week it wasn't even required to have it in there, so yeah. I didn't know how to fix it. All right. Okay, so um yeah, editing the editing that is something that um Adobe Flash um I haven't really relied upon the editor, the audio editor in uh, Adobe Flash so much as as I have just taken um, audio as is and inserted it uh, as as is right there um, in my animations. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and play it. And... Um, Okay, and so the ocean waves is its own layer, and you just yeah. inserted the audio file um, right there in the um, on the one layer. Yes, and then so when you imported that. Uh, did you just use the import to library and uh, yes. and so then you just did the you clicked on file import import to library you grabbed the uh, yes. mp3 file that you had on your uh, on your computer and then once it was there you just dragged it, you selected the uh, layer, and you dragged yes. it from your library onto that line, uh, onto that layer. So, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it uh, for adding audio. And you can move it around, as you, as you know, uh, you can have it start at, on a different keyframe, and you, it looks like you have a your Jaws two uh, animation. Well, the an, the total animation is so short. 
um, that you only got to hear the little Jaws sound twice right here. So then I, I drug it in again and set it to where it was in between those two so I could get more donut, donut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was smart. So they both are playing at the same, all, all three are playing at the same time. And, and yeah. you, you pretty so much. I wanted this one to fade out. So you just heard the Jaws thing when the jaw, when the shark came up, but I couldn't figure out how to do it because it, I guess it's the wrong kind of file or something. The, um, is the ocean is a wave file, is that right? Yes. Okay. So click on the MP3, uh, the layer with the MP3. Uh, That's just, the Jaws one. Yeah. And then... Uh, the effects up there, uh, click on the download of the, uh, on the right in the properties up there and just click on that, uh, the drop down and make sure, I want to see if that's open or available. Go ahead and click on that. It, it, it's not, see? it's not for either one of those. I don't know why it's not. All right. Now let's go to the library. Click on the library. And um, do a right click on the ocean's gold dot wave. Um, and then let's click on properties. See what we can play with there. Okay, let's cancel that one. And then uh, do it one more time and then let's click update this time. Right click and do update. Um, yeah, this, let's do the same thing to the MP3 file in your library. Click close and let's just see if uh, the JAWS theme song by the way, where did you get your, yeah, this is called properties. I think it's going to be the same set. Where did you get your, um, um, see that's, that's two tracks there. Interesting. Stereo. Um, what, where did you uh, download your audio from? I just Googled, um, free, uh, I don't, I don't remember what which words I used, but something like free audio or free soundtrack, I think is what I googled. Yeah, I was just looking down at the the attributes of this of this audio file, and it's mono. I thought it was stereo with the two tracks there. Huh. All right, so. Um, you said you just went to Google and did download free audio files. Is that right? I think I put in free soundtrack, but was the actual words I used. Right. Um, MP3.com is a website that, uh, let's see, let's do sound effects, uh, free, Sound effects, MP3, freesound.org, sounddogs.com is one that I've heard about. This freesound.org is one that uh, you might want to check out. It, it's the first one that came in the, um, it, it was the first one in the search. Let me see if I can find. Oh, that one you need to log in. 
Yeah, I didn't do anything. I had to log in or sign up or anything like that. Yeah, Kim Kim goes right to YouTube and snags the uh, audio track. <laughs> uh, the MP3 audio track from from whatever she finds there. What do you download uh, your audio track? What do you use to download the audio track, Kim? Here's a link that I'll paste. It's um, it is YouTube, and it is an audio library. A baby. <laughs> Lots of categories. Here, I'll. Um, did you click on that link? Can you click on that link because uh, your screen is what's being shared? The um, the YouTube. Can you click on the link? I like in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. Because your screen's being shared, so I wanted to. Uh... How do I get to chat from here? Click on Zoom. Down to the bottom. The Zoom uh, is like the white film icon with a blue circle around it. Uh, let's see. Where is your chat? Do you have, did the chat show up when you clicked on that? Here. What I'm going to do, I'll, I'll, um, I'll share my screen. And then. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the link that I found is youtube.com slash audio library slash sound effects. And here you can download them. And then here, basic categories. So you and then download the file. And then in your flash. I posted a link to mine as well that I use. So, okay, yeah. You that's that's where you're uh, converting the video, you're you're snagging the audio track. Whereas what I just pointed out, yeah, uh, what I just pointed out is where you can download just the MP3, just for the audio track and the sound effects. 
you can also get some free music and if you like you can just do an audio track during your animation you know games do that i can use sound effects yeah here's the link that ken posted it's an online video converter. Extract audio or video from a URL. Oh, um, here. There we go. Online video converter. And this is the this is the link that I posted, youtube.com slash audio library slash sound effects. Click on whatever you want and download it. Then you in your animation, you uh, import, you download the file, and then you import it into your Library flash import import to library. Go to your downloads folder. Just click on that and it brings it up right here. So file import import to library. And let me make sure I need to take the layer, insert keyframe, and then um, dragging and dropping the audio onto, see, you have to be careful because if it's too long, um, then you're going to have problems. You need to make sure that the, um, the animation, the tween that you're dragging onto, and so you really have to find out how long the animation is, or the audio is. See, these are very long. So maybe I'll grab a short one. Air whoosh underwater. Try that one. Shorter. File, import, import to library. Air whoosh. There it is. You can uh, double click on it while it's in the library and just test it. Sounds like a, a shotgun. If I did everything correctly, I can add it directly to that layer that I've created. To the layer. Gonna, I think this is just removing it within. You might organize your files. You might want to create like a new folder here, and you can put your audio files in in that. That that's what I was just doing there. All right, so Kim asked the question, uh, can you make a stopping point if it's too long? Well, then you, you need to be able to edit the audio and um, 
And that is because it, it's kind of like when you have an audio file, it comes as is unless you create another audio file that is smaller in size. So um, these are all to this length. And that's where the garage um, software is helpful for uh, editing audio, making it smaller, garage band audio. I can't remember, it was um, one of the students who was wanting to get together, because personally I haven't used GarageBand so much, but I knew he did. I can't remember his name. Um, Start with a J. I can't remember. So anyways, just make sure your layer is selected. Um, some people just drag it right onto the stage. And, and because of the layer that I've got selected, it automatically puts it right there. Don't make the mistake of trying to drag it on directly onto there. You actually have to select the layer and just drag it onto the stage. Now this time I'm going to, so I inserted a keyframe and then I just drag, just select the layer and drag, drag it, drag out the, um, drag it onto the stage and depending on where your scrub selector is, it will drop it there. Here's a fade out option. So fade in and see how that works. Yeah, fade in, fade out. Lydell, that's it. All right, so that's audio. And on uh, Thursday, we'll go over uh, animating text. And um, so, so was there somebody who recorded it tonight? I'd like to get the, the full recording so I can upload that from you. So thanks everybody for showing up and uh, we'll see you Thursday night. I wanted you to show me how to shorten the audio clips. Uh, so the um, the way that 
you can either edit it and then um, let me see if I can do it right here. Because what I've done is I've edited it outside of uh, the outside of um, Adobe Flash, and then um, I've cut it and then dragged it in already edited. So um, doing this within Flash. I have a quick idea. Okay. Um, when I was working on mine, I didn't do audio, but it was for uh, doing my frames. Um, what about trying to um, highlight from 60 to, like, say, 35, and then uh, right-click and remove frame, maybe? Or is it not giving you that option? Wait, okay, now, now try and play it. I think that worked. Yeah, I think. Yeah, because I had to do a lot of uh, moving frames just to get what I wanted, uh, at least for the animation wise. Yeah. Select it, right click, remove frame. Beautiful. But it's it's still being played. Oh, okay. Huh? That's weird. I thought to myself, man. Okay. Oh. I didn't think it was that easy. Uh, that was worth a shot. Oh. All right, you guys have a good night. Thanks. Yep. Could you tell me any ways that I could uh, edit it? Uh, outside of this so that I could know like a few tips on how to do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what I do is, the tool I use is Audacity. Can you send me a link in the chat? So you can just type in download Audacity. Does it cost money or is it free? It's free. Good. So download it, install it, run it. OK. 
Okay, tell me when you're this far. Can you, are you doing, are you doing these steps? Okay, so I just opened up the MP3 file, then grab that and cut, and then file new uh, and Edit, paste, and there it is. So it's just the first seven seconds. That other, the other one is on a different dialogue over here. You can see, so this is first seven seconds, if I grab these first seven seconds, or actually grab from here to here, so I grabbed about seven seconds right out, I did a copy, and then a cut, and then a paste. And then you can just save this. Export audio. MP3. Download faucet. Oh, um, I forgot about this. It needs a special. This is a little bit tricky uh, to use MP3. It does. They don't have built into it, so. I'm going to cancel this for now, and instead, I'm going to export a different file format. Export audio, change to WAV file. This one is built in. So, got that, and now let's do a file, import, import to library. There's the WAV file I want. Faucet. Click on library, and there's the faucet. Drag it out, drop it. Now this is, what, seven seconds long. So, 60 frames per second. So if I've got 60 seconds, 60 frames, and if I just do five frames per second, then because I'm going five frames per second and this was seven seconds long that ended up taking up 35 frames and you can see my other what sounds like a gunshot is, is actually shorter there If we do Yeah. 
That actually is a pretty good gunshot, by the way, Brandon. Yeah, that's right, Kim. Download Audacity. See, when you bring the audio file in, it's kind of like a, a solid that can't be broken up so much. That's why I cut it up. All right, so who is it that was, uh, let's call it a night and tell me who, who here was uh, recording that can help me out. Looks like Melissa or Stephanie are recording. Melissa, are you at a place where you have a, a fast connection? Um, or are you Stephanie? Kim, did you uh, record? I don't think so. Okay, let's stop the recording. All right, let's do this. Uh, Stephanie, if you could, uh, if you could call me, let's go with Stephanie as the plan here. Call me when your file is downloaded. And then um, I'll figure out how I can get it from you because it'll be probably a pretty good sized file. There's my phone number right there. When it's done creating, give me a call and let's see how big it is, okay? Okay, everybody, thank you very much. We'll see you on Thursday night. Good night.